Hello again, Javier Orozco. This time I will be presenting to you the second part of the initial approximation towards the importance of materials in the sustainability of cities. Actually, we will be dealing with the different possibilities of nanomaterials, which in the very near future will be a key uh, element for the development of sustainable cities and its assessment. How it all began. Humanity has been suffering uh, and many times from uh, different scientists who are predicting that uh, the end of the world is near. Robert Malthus uh, in the early 20th century, end of the 19th century, made a very simple calculation assuming that the rate of production of food and the different elements consumed by, by people uh, would not be enough soon to reach uh, the equality point and so uh, would, humanity would be starving. However, this is not true because science uh, has appeared once again to save humanity. In this case, it was uh, the first approach was made by Richard Feynman with his famous speech uh, where he ended saying there's a lot of space down there. He proclaimed a really interesting fact. As you go down into the size of the atom, you are increasing the possibilities of exchange and uh, chemical activities and, and therefore the results that are expected from the different elements. In other words, when we go into the nanoscale, we can expect uh, materials to produce increasingly exponential amounts of effect of results into whatever purpose we're approaching. Uh, a very simple analysis of the different sizes of uh, cells to uh, molecules to atoms and to components can uh, give us an idea on the possibilities of working at these levels. However, working at these levels is not really easy. We need a very special tools as that has been the, the key, the, the problem for preventing us to reach uh, the real application at the nanoscale. The tools available are summarized on this slide. First, we can work by layer by layer surface. In other words, uh, once we have a flat and even surface, which can be polarized on its outer edge and its outer limit, and we are progressively dipping this charged surface onto a solution where there are plenty of different ions. These are electrically bonded to the charged layer, leaving a, a inverse charge on the surface of the material. By changing the different baths and adding different uh, layers, we can assume that we are building a one atom by one atom layer with the different charges and the applications are really tremendous. We'll see them later. Another possibility is to work with uh, electron uh, tools, with electron microscopes, which allow us to control very accurately, even at nanoscale level, the position of, of atoms. Also at microscopic level, or what we think is microscopic, like is the case of inkjet, we can deposit a very small amount of uh, matter, even uh, molecules, at the precise and accurate position where we want them to be in order to build functional elements. This is the case with uh, inject nano injectors. Also, electrodeposition is a technique that, due to the selective electronegativity and the control of charges and electrical fields, allows us to control, uh, to build under very strict control the different layers which are building nano nanoconductors, uh, semiconductors, and different devices uh, at the nanoscale. Now, uh, vacuum processes are additionally another possibility by accelerating particles or uh, molecules in the gas state that can be uh, joined and linked chemically to the surface. 
plasma approach is a similar thing, but in this case, a very high energy state that is providing the what they call the fourth state of matter and allowing the production of very thin layers, which can be used in industrial processes like RON. So nowadays, the possibilities of achieving these devices are a reality. How can we assemble these things and what are the possible applications? Actually, all these are related to uh, cities and to sustainability. From water, food to specific uh, requirements from the city, energy, uh, ICTs, uh, clean transport, and even into the human being, we can get into uh, very important fields of approach which will leave us with huge application fields in the future and with the minimum consumption of matter. So the resources won't be a problem, only the technology in order to achieve these developments. For example, if we want to get water out of the air, there are some molecules like metal organic frameworks which we can build and control very accurately which allow us uh, as the air goes through these uh, frameworks to capture the water molecules and then condense them for uh, their use later. Naturally this is done on the desert with uh, plants and some other trapping methods but these uh, elements of um, different layers of metal organic frameworks can be built onto an exchanger where the humid air goes through and uh, allows the collection of food. Regarding food, we can build nanosensors, we can build uh, different uh, controlling elements for uh, putting the right amount of food, water and resources for growing uh, crops, even with the absence, the complete absence of earth in hydroponic uh, growth. When we add to the control of the different elements of the plants, the possibility of putting uh, some of these uh, nanostructures into the air, they can control the amount of nutrients which are fed onto the plants, or even they can be applied for cleaning the atmosphere. In the case of energy, the examples are much nearer to industrial reality. For example, we can build uh, five different layers of very thin materials in order to get a supercapacitor cell, which has on top a solar cell for producing energy and storing it simultaneously. Very recently, we have been even able to do this attached to a ceramic tile for the use on buildings. Another possibility is to develop artificial leaves, as you see on the top left, where uh, different membranes can, using the energy provided by the sun, split water and produce oxygen and at the same time hydrogen, which can be used as a fuel. These fuel cells that can be also built with nanomaterials can provide energy with uh, no environmental impact and at a very small cost, provided that we have these uh, membranes and we have uh, sun to bring the energy which is required into the cycle. And uh, architectural elements like these shades which can be put onto uh, buildings, uh, car parks or any other places uh, with very simple thin films built on top of the glasses can allow the collection of energy with only uh, the cost of developing the material. Regarding the multifunctional materials, we can add to whatever surface, to whatever existing object functionalities using nanoscale devices. For example, on the top left, we have a very normal glass, which uh, has been added a layer uh, with uh, molecules of titanium dioxide, which are preventing the water drops to stick to the surface. They are repelled by the surface and they are drop, uh, leaving a very clean atmosphere uh, surface on the glass. Later down of the glass, you can see very normal pavement elements which have been covered 
by again an attach which is a crystalline state of the titanium dioxide in order to clean the atmosphere and uh, provide with water uh, a very pure uh, uh, environment within the cities. We can build uh, luminescent elements which are storing the energy of the sun during the morning and can illuminate our path uh, during the evening. We can add functionality even to the sheets on the bed in order to control the strength and to measure whatever uh, monitored elements we need related to the strength. Uh, applying to lentils, very detailed, very complex nanoscale circuits can allow us to have screens embedded to our eyes in order to provide the smart technologies which are required every day within the cities. Even we can print houses with these nanospheres, which can help for binding and uh, facilitating the production of elements. On the long run, the impact will be huge because functional objectives uh, will be achieved with uh, huge gains on productions, uh, with uh, very small energy cost, with uh, very efficient use of resources, and uh, providing uh, the desired objectives for the sustainable cities, like uh, diminishing the CO2 uh, footprint, uh, water, capturing water, storing energy, and so on. So the future is into the development of these materials and its use for cities and for human applications. Regarding the biological <coughs> applications, and we can develop also molecules which are tuned for detecting the RNA of the different elements which are dangerous, connect to them and then provide either an immune response or a memory for a future activation of these. In the case of quantum computers, we will be able to produce uh, with uh, new uh, quantum states, which is adding for the electron movement, uh, three other three possibilities for their spin, and so storing a large amount of energy, uh, sorry, a large amount of uh, information at the electron scale. So in that examples, the future quantum computers will be able to provide uh, an exponential growth of the uh, calculus possibilities of the machines in a very limited space and with no consumption of energy, which will allow uh, the, the cool calculation and avoiding, therefore, the huge temperatures which are a problem nowadays on computers. Regarding transport, when we build these fuel cells that we described into an engine, we can provide uh, cars with only uh, water as an output or an input because in a reverse cycle we can use water for being split and being burnt to produce water again and uh, have the energy required for uh, running a car or any machine. In the case of sustainable cities, all these elements can be combined onto buildings, onto benches, onto different elements, onto park for controlling and gathering the data required for the adequate and efficient management of the possibilities of the city. Applying to nanomedicine, the development of these nanotechnologies will allow uh, providing specific responses which are attacking tumors or are attacking uh, dangerous cells and so eliminating illnesses with only a very, very small amount of medicine and with no after effects. In the case of monitor cells is also very interesting for growing new vegetables or for the human beings where we can detect the evolution of undesired cells and so act immediately with the nanomedicine or with any other elements which we have already described. In the case of all these things coming together, we will be able to turn waste 
and undesired outputs from other elements into new, uh, very powerful elements to be provided to the circle, to the circularity of all uh, resources and materials only using elements like uh, energy of the sun or completely renewable elements. And this is the end of the presentation, which I hope you have enjoyed. At the end, you will have and a slide uh, presenting the rights and the possibilities of using these slides. Thank you very much for your attention.